case you haven't seen the video of this adorable young girl who loves to put chickens on her head and balance them, or even if you have seen it, enjoy this video. And if you're just listening, enjoy the peaceful music. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Marshall Kramer Show. I am Marshall Kramer, and this is my show, the place where I do my shit. How you doing? Is everybody doing good? Everybody feeling good? Feeling bad? Some of y'all feeling bad? It's good to hear. I hear ya. Yeah, like Dora. Ready? How you doing? Good. Good to hear that. Glad to hear you're doing good. Can you find the missing stone? Yay! Exactly. Good job. Um, today, I asked about you because today we're talking all about you. We're talking about me. We're talking about ourselves. We're talking about focusing on ourselves, worrying about ourselves, you know, and in some ways, maybe a little bit of putting your own oxygen mask on first, but really it's about you and focusing on you and, you know, a lot of topics, a lot of stuff we can get into, but why this topic? Well, basically... What I was feeling, I don't know about y'all, talk about it a million times about a winter slump. I do it all the time. And um, as the winter goes on, you know, I have to really check in with myself each week, each month, X, Y, Z, to really see how I'm doing because I just naturally see this trickle in all aspects of my life, this decline, this, you know, this decline of efficiency, of productiveness, of, you know, enjoyment, relationships, all this stuff. And it happens so slow. You know, it's such a slow snowball that I don't really notice it getting bigger. I don't really notice it getting worse, you know, or getting less. I should say it's, I don't really notice my productivity getting less, less, and less. So, you know, but I did. I finally had another check-in this last week. And it wasn't even that. I'll tell you this. <laughs> I'll tell you why the check-in started. Because I had two, I had two um, like, uh, warning signs. And one of the warning signs was I decided to put on a pair of jeans that I haven't put on in a while because um, – you know, I just haven't been, had my jeans on, and my jeans turned from, you know, tight-ish jeans to a goddamn tourniquet. I'm talking, I'm talking straight blood clots. I'm talking strokes, right? I mean, my jeans are just so tight, and and, and then my shorts too. So, my my first my warning sign was on that 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 this happens sometimes, but half of my closet goes, all right, can't use that now. We <laughs> we put on too much weight. Um, and um, my second, my second wake up call was basically just um, looking at my numbers of my because I'm I'm a highly um, organized person when it comes to like my finances and whatnot. I used to even do it with my lifting and stuff. Like I'm talking Excel sheets, spreadsheets, all that shit. So I track all that stuff. And I just was looking this last week, and I was looking at my income, and I'd go, wow, a lot lower than what it was, you know, weeks before. So that's another wake up call too. Um, and, and so basically there was a wake up call to saying something's going on. You're obviously not productive in your numbers because we can see your numbers declining. And then you're obviously not productive in your exercise and diet because you've obviously been gaining weight when you weren't trying to go on a bulk phase or X, Y, Z. So something's going on. Where's our core issue here? What is, what is the roots that is sprouting this trunk and these branches and, and leaves and twigs, X, Y, Z? And so I go, all right, well, let's look in. And so I saw my, you know, diet and I saw my financials. I go, all right, well, there's got to be a reason there's, that's going on. And I go, well, it's got to be stress. Duh. Looking more in, it's got to be stress. Okay, well, that, that can't be the final answer because stress is massively vague. So where do you think the stress is coming from? X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And then I started thinking about it, narrowing it down a little bit more. And you know what I thought about? With what, what was all my stresses? I'm not going to use anything specifically, but... um what all they what they were all related around was external things <laughs> things that i can't control and things that is not the real reason that's just because my ego wanted to you know push the blame off of marsh it couldn't be marsh's fault no way could 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 the reason marsh is feeling bad it, it can't be his fault and i talked about it a million times on the show and this is one thing for myself I just believe in, and I will do it to the end of time. People think it's extreme, and a lot of times I do this, but I just like it because for my own mental health, it's just the easiest thing, but it's taking 110% responsibility. You know, maybe some things are just luck and it wasn't my fault, but for my own mental health, 
it doesn't help me thinking like that. But um, every problem I had, every problem I could think about why I'm eating shitty now and why I'm working less was all everybody else's problem. It was his problem, their problem, her problem, you know, that problem, this thing's problem. It was every other problem that they were all doing this to me. You know, fucking woe is me, pity marsh. I'm not getting invited here. I'm not feeling, you know, liked by this entity or, you know, I'm not feeling reciprocated from, you know, I'm not all this mumbo jumbo bullshit, everything but my own issues. And then so, you know, after I had the wake up call of the tourniquet jeans <laughs> and uh, thinking back to my diet and, and then uh, not seeing the paychecks every Tuesday like I, I like to, um, I found these external things and I just wallowed in them for the next two weeks. I was just paralyzing and plaguing myself again and just being like, <laughs> yep, yep, I'm just I'm pissed because you suck, 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 this sucks, suck, suck, that sucks, suck, suck, it's because, because all, all these other things have ruined my life. life. And I just kept doing it, kept doing it, kept doing it. And finally one day I go, fucking shit. Stop. I'm running out of oxygen. I can see it every day because I can literally, I, I, I literally, I know I could have, you can do whatever you want, but I literally couldn't do anything like for two weeks. Like for like, I could work for like 30 minutes because I was so negative in my mindset. I would just wake up and be like, don't even know why I woke up today. Cause no one likes me. This guy's a piece of shit. This isn't going well. This isn't going well. Blah, blah, blah. The world fucked me in the ass. Right. That's what I was thinking about over and over and over again for literally, let's just say two weeks and finally I go you're losing oxygen because you can only do stuff for 30 days 30 minutes a day so there's not enough oxygen I got to put on my own mask no one cared who I was till I put on the mask and I, I, if I've learned anything from myself especially my podcast and if I don't want to be a hypocrite accountability worrying about myself worrying about whether any of those things that I said any of those external things whether they were true or not it's obvious two weeks later that they don't help in sitting and fixating on. It doesn't help me to fixate on this guy, this girl, that business, this thing, right? It doesn't help me. So I go, this guy, this girl, that thing, this business, where's the core within me? Where, where, where is the core problem coming from that I may have started? You know, X, Y, Z. Um, you know, so... Basically just trying to worry about myself. So what did, I, what did I do? The first thing I did was I didn't even want to think. I just got up and I'm like, you know what? New podcast that came out, something that I really like and I haven't listened to them in a while because I usually listen to podcasts most, I guess, when I'm editing or driving. And um, those are the things I weren't doing. So I go, I'm going to hop my fucking car. It's way early for DoorDash. But I'm going to hop my car, put on a good podcast and start to work. Do some DoorDash. Just start to work. Started early, wasn't getting fast orders. Then the lunch, um, then the lunch rush came, and I, you know, had a really good lunch rush. And then after lunch rush, I wanted to go home. I was so tired, and I go, no, let's just go to the gym and bust out thirty minutes of lifting. Just bust out thirty minutes of lifting. After simply just door dashing, just driving and working, quote unquote, making financial, making money for four hours, and then doing a thirty-minute workout. So four and a half hours of worrying about me and doing something good for myself. And not fixating on all these other external things that have really nothing to do with me. And I can't control. They like literally, they didn't fizzle away. They still were there. But the, the physical sensation of the anger that they brought me was literally just relieving. It was literally like leaving my body. But it, I mean, I can still feel today. Some of, that, some of that shit is still there. But that's because I wallowed in it for two weeks. And I've only been doing stuff now for the last week, right? So I got a little bit here till I can, you know, make some good habits and break some old habits. And uh, again, make and break is all up to me. But um, just doing, worrying about myself. Saying, hey man, I can't worry about those other things. If, if this is the actual reality of this organization, of this entity, this business, this path, if that's the actual reality, this negative reality with all these negative circumstances, hey, it is what it is. Lick your wounds, bro, and you just got to keep moving forward. You just got to keep moving forward. And, um, you know, I think I talked about it with uh, the last episode, with one of the episodes with Reed, and I may have talked about it before too, like utilizing your selfishness and I talked about it with Matt, with Matthew McConaughey. Talked about it in his in his Greenlight books. You know, sometimes the most selfless thing 
looking, the most selfless looking thing is actually the most selfish thing. And sometimes we have to take these selfish measures in order to even have the ability to be selfless. That's why the oxygen mask analogy is just the greatest analogy. How egotistical and selfish is it that the plane's falling down and losing oxygen and you look at your child and you go, nah. Me first, bruh. Right? At surface level, it looks very selfish. You ever heard the old line, you can't love anybody until you love yourself. You can't respect anybody until you respect yourself. All that stuff. That's exactly what I just want to talk about here today. And, you know, to myself. I know I'm looking in the camera and I'm editing it and posting it to YouTube. But, you know, this isn't something I just conquered, you know, years ago. Years ago, they tried to... Oh, now I'm big. Hey, listen to Marshall Kramer. He knows everything about self-improvement, self-betterment. No, I'm telling you, hey, 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 this is an active diary. I just, I'm going through this. I'm telling you right now that I, when I woke up this morning, that weight I was telling you about, the, the, the angry weight of all those external things that I was feeling, it's still there today. And it's a lot less. I feel a lot lighter today than I did five days ago. But it's going to be there tomorrow and the next day a little bit. You know, it's going to be there. And even when I get rid of it, quote unquote, if I... Stop putting my own oxygen mask on first. I imagine, fuck, I will go definitive and say, it will come back. That weight will come back. I will start looking out. But what is that? I'm asking y'all this question. I don't know because this is the question. What happens when we stop worrying about ourselves? Why? Why? Was I literally like, dude, I, I mean, I can't even explain to you, bro. Like, I'm just going to say entity. My life was one way for many, 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 many months. And then stuff started changing and I fixated the changes on that there was this entity that was the problem. This entity was the, 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 the one that was ruining everything. The, the, it, was, it, it was the, the thing that broke, the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. It was everything that, that has started the snowball, all the trickle, X, Y, Z. And I would just fixate it, dude. I started thinking things about this entity. I started thinking saying things out loud and really feeling things about this entity that weren't real and getting really sad about, you know, the fact that this isn't working out, you know, it's not going the way I want it to be. All these things. It was just this woe is me, pity marsh, blah, 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 for such a long time. I mean, I told you seriously, two weeks. And I just, it was affecting not only that path, it was affecting every other entity and every other path that I have in anything, relationships, business, everything. But why? Why did I initially want to look out and blame out and, you know, bastardize all these other external things, but not ever look in? And I go, I'm perfect. I'm Marsh. I'm the man, pat on the back. I'm the man. Always been the man. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, no, you're not. Like, why is it, is it, is it trying to protect the ego? Is that what it is? Is that I didn't want to realize that I'm at fault and that I'm flawed. You know, you always want to feel like I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm kicking ass. You know, and that's that's actually a, 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 how I've, I've changed my narrative of how I talk about stuff. When people used to ask me, how you doing, Marsh? How's things been? I used to be like, it's going great. Positive. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's going so good. Best it could possibly ever be. And I was saying that because I believe I was saying that to overcompensate for the reality of I want it to be like that, but it just wasn't that. And I'm doing better. By no means was I doing bad, but like same thing with now. So someone asked me, hey, Marsh, how you doing? I go, I'm doing well, you know, Try, trying to do better every day, you know, seeing where life takes me, slowing down a little bit, blah, blah, blah. But it's a lot less of this like straight euphoria and elation and all this energy of like, yeah, kick the world's ass. Yeah. Now it's just like, hey. Wake up and, you know, do what's next. Do what's next. And I found that I'm just, I don't have that crash. As you just, just imagine taking that pre-workout and going nuts in the gym. And then it, what, you're going to crash. You're going to crash. It's an immediate crash. Even if, you, even if you just lay in your bed, you can't fall asleep. But it's a crash. It's just like, well, I've really had a lot of energy drained. But I still have enough caffeine thrown through me that I can't fall asleep. But... You know, or think about your, your morning rush. You have your coffee, right? You, you rush and then you have lunch and lunch is great and you immediately have that afternoon crash. Like whatever comes up must come down. That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm kind of just liking to ride the wave. I think I talked about it before with Dawson Pittman, you know. If you think of 
you know, your energy level from a zero to a 10, you know, by the law of gravity, right? By those laws, if you have a 10, you have to have a zero because again, whatever comes up must come down. So if your attitude comes up, your adrenaline comes up, your energy level comes up, it has to come down. And it usually comes down respectively to how high it went up. So maybe life, especially for myself, rides in this middle line more, maybe a little bit above the five, maybe around a six and seven, which is a good place to be, right? I'm not like, oh my God, sunshines and rainbows, the world's a beautiful place, <laughs> Right? I'm not all that. But I'm also not like, I want to die, die. Do, 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 do. dead this morning. But it's also kind of how I feel sometimes. So I talk about it with the moods and alcohol, right? When I'm on a 10 Friday night and I'm dancing, I'm fucking feeling sexually grooved. I'm feeling lubricated from that liquor, right? When I'm like that, I wake up next morning, I'm almost a zero. I am mad, tired, angry, and so sad. Like there's nothing, there's no endorphins running through me no more. So that would be like a zero. So like, you know, experience that 10, you have to experience that zero. And I don't want to experience, I don't want to experience a zero, one or a two. Okay. And ever again, if my, if, and, and I mean, nobody, I want, I don't want anyone to die. My grandma's going to live forever. My parents are going to live forever. We're all going to die together when I'm hundred. Mom and dad will be 130. Granny will be 160. And we're just going to die together. I don't want any more sad stuff. Right. I just don't want that. And I think what I mean that is like those circumstances are going to happen. My grandma's going to eventually die when I'm still alive. You know, all this different stuff. My dogs, oh my God, my dogs are going to die. Oh, no. Bubba. Shit. <clears throat> okay. I gotta collect myself here. Anyway, they're all going to die. But I think a lot of the times, my zeros, ones, and twos were caused by my going up. I came down because I forcefully made myself go up. I took a shit ton of caffeine because I wanted to be energized for the day, you know? I listened to a bunch of motivational shit about bullshit because I wanted somebody to tell me, you gotta go kick the world's ass. I go, yeah! Kick the world's ass! That's what I'm gonna go do. And I go, I drink or I smoke to get all these fucking tens, get all this euphoria and elation, and then, you know, we know what happens. Ten turns into a zero. So I go, well, let's stop all that hype shit. Let's stop all that. Yeah! Let's just wake up every morning and go, hey, today's a great day. Today's a day I'm excited for. Today's a day I can, oh, feels comfortable to put my feet on the ground here. I'm ready to stand up and, you know, not kick today's ass, but I'm going to use today. I'm going to be very productive and efficient in today. And again, I'm just talking to myself here. It's an active verbal diary, right? I'm figuring this stuff out right now. I'm 22 years old. So if, you, if this is not how you were, I know many people. But I would argue, again, time's gonna ha time has a funny way of bringing forth all truths. So we will eventually figure out who's right about these things. So maybe I should talk a little bit more definitively because I, I do believe in the things I'm saying. But I just like to say, well, but maybe not. So, you know, I don't know. But I do know people who love, love that 10 and 0 shit. They don't like that 0, but they love waking up and just motivational speeches, loud music. Grind, 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 grind. They wake up at six, and by noon they're crashed. And then they have, and then from noon to three, three to five, five to seven, before they go to bed, they have these ridiculous problems that they bring to everyone around them. Oh, this, this, and this. Oh my God, I just hate life. And it's like they cope with their reality of this ten, and now they feel like a zero. They go, where did it go? I was so happy this morning, and now I'm just, I don't even know what to do with my life. It's like, because you were at a 10, now you're at a zero. Zero! And so, what I would say, if you ever feel like at a zero, Zero! What? Sit in it. That, that's my advice, is to, as I learned best for myself, is to sit in it, right? And wait till you naturally come back up to a three, four, five, and then say, all right. No more tens. Not that a 10 will never happen. I'm just not going to force a 10. I'm not going to sit on here on a Tuesday and be like, oh, I kind of feel like a five. Well, let's just take 600 milligrams of caffeine and go smoke a joint and be at a 10 of enjoyment and then watch whatever movie I want and just sit around all day. I'm not going to do that. If, I, if, I, if, it's a, if it's a Tuesday that I don't, I don't want to work, I'll go, oh, let me just go watch a movie. You know, don't need the caffeine. Don't need the joint. And I go, oh, I enjoyed this movie. It was a nice seven, nice seven or eight, you know? And then if anything, you know, happens to happen, I, I, I roll down for a three or four once the movie's over. I go, oh, shit, I'm sad that movie's over. I really enjoyed that seven or eight when I was watching it, you know? Whatever comes up must come down is basically, basically what I'm getting at. But I know a bunch of people who, who, who just love that go, 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 go. But 
talking about definitive stuff. I would argue because I've had many people, I've had three, there's three guys specifically that I know that come to me all the time because they love that shit, that motivational shit, that loud music, that bunch of happy in the morning, but they just have these massive crashes. And when one o'clock comes, two o'clock comes, they just like, I don't know what to do with my life, man. I don't know. It's like the old fucking Christmas story. I can't remember which one it was. It's, it's the story of Chris Kringle. I can't remember exactly. It's the one where he was, it was the animated one where he went up to this, it was, it was becoming of Kris Kringle. Anyway, it's, there's an old song. You know, you put one foot in front of the other. And soon you'll be walking across the floor. Put Boom! One put one in foot of the other. in front of the other. Right? That is what I'm talking about with getting yourself back on track. Realizing your, your genes have turned to a tourniquet. <laughs> Realizing you're not making the money you need to be making, right? Realizing something's going on. Even when you're at a zero. Even when you're at a one. Even when you're at a ten and you may fear what's coming, that zero, that, that, that crash. Whenever something bad ex you experience, right? Put your own oxygen mask on and just move one step at a time. Try and think less. I was just talking to my other buddy. It might have been... It might have been... It was either Abe's or Reed. But we were talking about how... I used to have this line. They brought this up first, and I told them this line I used to have. They Fine, I'll talk about them first. They brought it up to me. They go, man, I don't know, man. I'm starting to think there's a lot in not thought. <laughs> there's a lot in no thought. He's like, I was really just thinking about, you know, not thinking. And, and you know the old Nike line, just do it. Do it! Just do it! Like, and I remember another old roommate of mine, he used to talk about it a lot of time too. He goes, Marsh, he goes, I think there's something when, when, when we think about things. You know, you know, like, the moment you had that one thought of going against what you were going to do, you're going to do it. Or vice versa. You want to go to the gym. I want to go to the gym. I want to go to the gym. And also you wake up in the morning and go, I don't want to go to the gym. A lot of times, I, 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 speak for yourself, I guess. A lot of times I'm not going to the gym. The moment I have that thought of doubt in any sector of anything I want to do or not want to do, I will do it. It's just what's going to happen. And, he, and my, my older roommate was talking about that a lot. He'd be like, you know, he'd be like, Marsha, just think there's something about just doing. No thinking, just doing. And that was the line I used to have on my whiteboard all the time. It was just three words. No think, period, do. Not, not do not think, just do. No, I want it as short, as simple as possible. No think, just, no think, period, do. Not no think, just do. No think, period, do, period. No think, do. One foot, front of the other. Oxygen mask, step, walk. Next thing you know, you look back, you've gone a long way. Just like I was talking about earlier. If I put one foot behind the other, next thing, and you, you, it's, it's so slow, you're not even thinking about it. Next thing you know, you won't, you won't even realize how backwards you went. You know, you went way too far back. So... Same thing with this, you know? If you've seen yourself slowly fall into these bad habits and you never even realize it until months later, realize that it can be that easy to trek forward too. Just a slow step, one step, one foot in front of the other, all the way out that door, baby, and you're gonna be just fine. We're all gonna be just fine. Um, the Marshall Kramer Show is affiliated with Get Upside. Get Upside is the gas saving app. Save on gas, the money saving app. Save on gas, save on groceries, and save on restaurants. Ridiculous cashback prices. I'm talking 20 cents a gallon back on gas. I'm talking 46% off at Burger King. I'm talking 20% off of your groceries. I'm talking massive savings. Marshall, promo code Marshall8455. Get 15 cents off immediately by using that promo code on your next fill up. 15 cents off a gallon. Get Upside, the money-saving app, promo code Marshall8455. Also, Marshall Kramer Media. That's my media channel. That's how I bring you all this. That's how I got all this technology. Uh, not my channel. That's my business. Marshall Kramer Media, marshallkramermedia.com. You can look at all my examples, look at all my previous workings, and book me. You can also DM me at Marshall Kramer on my Instagram, and uh, you can find me there. Even if you don't live in Minneapolis, I've gone to Chicago, I've gone to Omaha, I've gone out to South Dakota, I've gone up, you know, Northern. I can, I love, I wanna just work, right? Even if you're not even, even if you're in Florida, you got a product, send me that product. I'll make a product video for you, you know? Get in contact with me, Marshall Kramer Media, and I will do whatever you need. And now let's go to this week's In the Minnesota News with Marshall Kramer. 
the Minnesota news this week. It is not news. Just as we learned earlier this year, uh, as the winter comes, Minnesota drivers still suck. Well, as the winter comes, we realize Minnesota weather still sucks as well. Um, it is not news to say that the Minnesota weather is far from polarizing, far from um, wacky. And <laughs> one day it could be 45 degrees and beautiful sun. Next day it could be negative four and snow all over the ground. We have had tornadoes. We have had lightning, thunder, and tornadoes in December here in Minnesota. That is literally insane. The weather's been warm. It's starting to get cold now, but the weather's been warm. I mean, it's 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 Minnesota. I mean, I, it's nothing but else to laugh about. Um, during the week of uh, December fifteenth, it was a Wednesday. That's when we had our big uh, storm. Uh, a lot of thunder and lightning. There was actually seven confirmed tornadoes in the Minnesota area, uh, more along the southern district. Uh, and um, sad to say that uh, I, I did hear a report of one man who died, uh, gotten uh, a tree or something, uh, something large fell on him from the tornado. And then obviously stepping out of side of Minnesota, you probably know as well about the devastating tornado in Kentucky. So for everyone involved in that and those who lost their lives, you know, bless your soul and, you know, thoughts and wishes go out to you your soul and uh your your family and friends and everyone impacted by that that should yeah that's um i used to love tornadoes man and I, third fourth and fifth grade if it was tornadoes pictures all over my walls i used to do research on them I used to watch youtube videos on them any presentation that i had in school during those years I would do them on tornadoes. If it was a history class presentation, I would do the history of tornadoes. If it was a science class presentation, I would do the science of tornadoes, what, the physics of tornadoes, whatever. I just loved tornadoes, but and they're such a cool... Um, they're easily understood. We understand the science of them, but they're just so cool. You know, there's this big natural force. If you, if you get to see it off in the distance, and if it's, if, it's, if it's a water sprout, and it's just messing up the ocean, or it's out in the middle of these fields, you know, and no one's crops getting damaged, but... When it's terrorizing homes, you know, and stuff like that, it's, you know, not really a smiley thing. So that's, that's, that, that's the news this week is that it's not news. Minnesota weather is still <laughs> fucked up. Um, yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, put your own oxygen mask on first um, and take care of yourself. I'm going to talk definitive a little bit. Please take care of yourself. Do it for you. You know, I talk about that oxygen mask on thing. You go like, Oh, well, why wouldn't it be bad? Why would it not be bad? Why would, why would anyone overthink about helping themselves out first and doing their own thing first? It's because for what may look like to you to get your oxygen levels back, it might be a lot more for somebody else, right? Putting your own oxygen mask on for some people, right? Becoming better for themselves so they can be better for everyone else around them may look like rehab, entering a rehab. It may look like entering therapy. It may look like, you know, these big things, stepping away from their social situations, leaving a job, you know, all these different things. It may be a long process that your, your, their oxygen levels have maybe been depleted for so long that it's going to take so long to get their oxygen levels back. Or maybe you, you know, your oxygen levels, you know, you're doing fine. So maybe your oxygen levels are just, you know, doing some self-reflection, doing some reading, you know, just doing a, a small thing a day, going to the gym, whatever, for yourself to make you feel better. Maybe, 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 maybe you don't need that much, much, much oxygen. But what I'm saying is, definitively, Marshall's telling you this right now, okay? If you listen to my show, that means you probably like this stuff. You probably like this, this whole self-help, whatever type stuff. Not that I'm trying to motivate you, but, you know, right now, no matter how much oxygen has been depleted or, or how much or little oxygen you need, put your, get your oxygen levels back to 100 so you can help everybody else. Take time away. I think I was talked about this before on a podcast with Dawson Pittman once again, was sometimes the best thing you can do for everyone else around you is to take time away from them so you can focus on yourself so you can come back and be better for everyone else around you. Also, you, it's you. Take care of you and love you. And with that being you, focus on you. And sometimes realize that you were the issue. You were the reason that this problem arose. If that works best for you, if you want to just go fuck Marshall, screw what he says, he don't know what he's talking about, cool. Just stop watching the show. Move on. <laughs> Find something else to do in your life. But otherwise, for real, take care of yourselves, man. And, and, and I, I promise you, even though it may feel selfish, it may feel hard in the beginning, you're going to, everyone else around you is going to benefit. And then maybe they'll even see you and, and, and have you lead by example and they'll start doing the, that for themselves. And then everybody's got flowing amounts of oxygen. 
and we're all doing good. The Marshall Kramer Show. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening to this episode all about you. And uh, until next time, take care of you, my friends. And uh, like always, scoot, boot, toodaloo. We were selfish every single time we were helpless. Every single time we cry wolf today, couldn't help.